Thank you for joining us on this week's edition of our Image Comics Reviews. Every single week, Image provides us with early access to their books digitally so that we can provide you with reviews as early as possible, day and date. Thank you to Image for that. Uh, we are talking about the two books that we thought were most interesting coming out of Image this week. Uh, I am joined by Pete Yo. to talk about King Spawn number one and Made in Korea number four. One of these books is a tearjerker. And it ain't King Spawn. Uh, but before we get into what? these reviews, it ain't it ain't King Spawn. King Spawn had me in tears, Sean. Yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> um, real quick, just want to let you guys know how you can support the show. If you enjoy what we are putting out, make sure you leave us a follow, rating, a review wherever you're listening. If that's YouTube, subscribe for free, like the video, share it with your friends. All that's free, and it helps us out a lot more than it costs you. Make sure you're listening to our main show, The Comics Pals, which drops every single Monday. We talk about the characters that you love and all the places you can find them. We're doing news. We do some interviews as well. We actually interviewed the writer behind Made in Korea, Jeremy Holt, uh, a few weeks ago. So that's the kind of interview that we get on that show. If you want to check that out, we would really appreciate it. What a flex. So that's the kind of interview we get on that show, just so you're oh, aware. Yeah. <laughs> gotta let the people know so let's let's start with king spawn this is an oversized issue uh it 67, sure was yes 67 pages with no less than five different artists so it was written by uh sean lewis he wrote the king spawn main story um todd mcfarland touched it up with some dialogue i'm going to assume that was probably the uh the uh the news sequences that Todd had loves so much. Um, yeah, he does. <laughs> he loves yeah. he loves his uh, TV screens. <laughs> yep. And then McFarlane also wrote the backup stories. Uh, the art was from Javi Fernandez, who did the main King Spawn story. Stefan Segovia did the haunt story. Marcio Takara, who I love, did the nightmare story. Uh, Philip Tan did the hero story and Brett Booth did the gunslinger story. All these were inked by Adelso Corona and Danielle hitting uh, Henriquez. Uh, the colors were done solely or not solely for the main story were done by FCO Placencia with the other stories being colored by Andrew Dollhouse, Marcelo Maiolo, Peter Steigerwald and Dave McGag. Uh, letters were by and world design for the main story and tom or or uh did everything else so quite a bit of a creative team for a very big book um this is the first of two books we are going to read today that feature children dying <laughs> yeah um it's funny when you when you said that one of them was a tearjerker and one was not. I had to restrain myself from me. I was like, I was about to make a joke, and I was like, mm, maybe don't make a joke about school shootings. You know, maybe that's not the move. <laughs> well, uh, they did put them in the funny books, right? Yeah, so. sure. Yeah, so I, uh, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because reading these two books back to back. And I read them in the order that we're reading them today. It, uh, or I'm sorry, the reverse order of the the order we're reading them uh, here As on the show. Uh, it it felt like whiplash because like I read Made in Korea and I was like, oh wow, like this is this is really serious and heavy and like this is a this is a crazy issue. And then you get to this and it's like every single one of these stories is just like filled with just wanton murder and violence and it's like i felt so desensitized to it um because like you you made the the point it's like literally the first uh two pages of of king spawn are a class filled of elementary school children being murdered uh with a bomb by like a demon of some kind um and it I don't know, like, it's not to say that the book acts like that's nothing. Like, the, literally the next page is she spawn, and they're at the funeral, and they're very much talking about how this is very serious and everything. But, like, I, I don't know, I didn't feel that, you know? Like, and the fact that the book 
had so like just so much of that kind of level of like you know um not even like hyper violence i guess because it's not that it's not like these crazy like action scenes mostly it's just like people just being dismantled and you know like turned inside out and all kinds of gnarly stuff and you know i'm certainly not um I'm not particularly squeamish or anything like that, you know, and like there's plenty of examples of like hyper violent books that I that I have enjoyed. Um, but I think like I I did just feel. Um, yeah, desensitized is the word, you know, to it after a while where it's like it feels like it was so common that it's like, OK, so like what are the stakes really? Welcome to Spawn. Yeah, I guess, right? Uh, The stakes are that there are angels and demons fighting in a world of man. Uh, That's pretty hefty. Um, And for the humans, the stakes are you can die at any second. For Spawn, (laughs) that's the real question because he's the main character, right? And and that's why like, I love... uh, I've really enjoyed this book. I, I don't know if I've read anything by Sean Lewis before, but... Um, I think he was a huge step up from Todd McFarlane's scripting. Um, And, you know, it's jarring. You're right. But like they say it in that scene at the um, at the grave site, uh, it's all about spawn. Like the kids dying is not relevant because the people who are doing the killing are not they're not they're not they're not connecting. They're not connected to the world that we live in they're connected to heaven and hell so kids dying for them is whatever they're they have some other goal and normally in a story that features an act like that like you think about uh well the next book we're going to talk about or civil war is a good example it would be the catalyst for something dramatic you know whereas here it's another domino and um i like it not because I like to see kids dying. That's really heavy. I like it because it establishes or further establishes that, you know, this is bad. This is really bad. The humans have no chance to save themselves, not even their children from what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I definitely get that. Um, I, I think, I think for me, the, the thing about this issue that I, I struggled with the most was that it was the anthology uh, style again because I think um I feel like I I just need something to grab onto you know and I feel like it's it, it it's just giving you glimpses of stuff and when I get in the rhythm with one of them it's like ah right, cool that's it that's that's your sample all right come back for gunslinger number one you know and it's like okay like I get it you know like that's that's a totally valid device um and I I don't even like mean to critique it for that I think it was just what kept me from from connecting with it in a deeper way, you know, is like, I don't really know who any of these characters are aside from their names and like their designs, you know, um, I don't know really like who they are, or what's important to them or, and maybe this just isn't that kind of book, you know, and like, and I need to just like get used to that. And like, that's not, that's not the rhythm of a spawn book, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like I, I found myself kind of like, struggling to orient myself in the story in terms of like what should i care about then if this doesn't matter what what does you know i mean it matters right like it matters to you so if yeah if if the children dying matters to you then it matters and spawn cares he clearly cares but not like he cares in the sense that damn they're dead kids. This is messed up. He yeah. makes a point to point out that the one woman is, is weeping over her son and he needs answers for her. Is and that I thought that that was well done. Well, is that she spawn in that scene? Yeah, but they're they're talking about a person whose children died in the explosion. He says, uh, uh, let me see if I can find the, the, the dialogue here. Um, I'm more concerned about that mother over there who has to deal with the fact that she'll never see her son ever again. Right, so I'm just confused. Is that she spawn and spawn in the scene talking? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, I think I originally thought that it was she spawn talking and that this woman was another woman who was just working with her or whatever. So that was uh, Mike. I was just confused. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So Spawn clearly cares. For sure. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's willing to do whatever it takes to solve this problem. The problem that he has to solve is not dead kids. It's the overall mm-hmm. war between heaven and hell. And I'm so compelled by that. Um, I, I love the kind of like, um, not nihilistic, but like jaded, for lack of a better term, perspective on both heaven and hell that this book has. Yeah, yeah. Um, this God that they refer to often is definitely, in my mind, like Old Testament. I don't give a shit about my creations, God. Uh, and I, I'm here for that. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to see how this unfolds. This book is crazy. Like, <laughs> I never thought, like, I have always liked Spawn. I didn't know that I would like the comic book this much. This is so cool. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm really glad you're having fun with it and, and, and getting into it super deep. I, uh, I definitely am not there with it, but, like, I don't know. Like, it's, it's fine. You know, like, I, I, I wasn't, like, super turned off by it. It was more just, like... I feel like I have a lot of questions and like, good. and and yeah, I guess that is a good thing. It's just kind of funny. Cause I remember when we read, um, whatever the, the precursor was to this that we reviewed. Um, I remember like, and like, I, you know, I showed my cards of how little I know about spawn in that episode, uh, or that review, but I thought it was funny how many of the comments were like, I don't worry about it. Just read it. It's spawn. And I'm like, okay, maybe that's just what I need to do is just like, get, just get in for the ride and just let it go where it's going to go and like trust that I'm going to figure it out or, or not. <laughs> or maybe, yeah, maybe it's not for you. Maybe this isn't your bag for me. I'm in like, this was great. The only thing I didn't <laughs> like was, um, uh, the, the, the news page. Like I really just need those to be gone forever. They're not good. No. Um, and then the backup stories, uh, you know, I didn't care for them. Like the haunt one, I haven't read haunt since that character first came out, which was in like 2013 or something. Right. And I didn't like it then too much. Don't care about it now. Um, that story I could have done without the nightmare one. I liked because that character looks crazy. <laughs> and I love that. It's just like, it's literally just spawn, but messed up like yeah um, doppelganger yeah from, from Sp- like this is that I don't or like know, bizarro, or bizarro. Yeah, that's, that's perfect like spawn already is like a messed up looking character yeah here's a more messed up version of that what if he was even less had his shit together <laughs> yeah um and yeah the other backup stories really i could take or leave uh yeah like fine i bet you i would have walked out of this issue feeling more positive on it if it wasn't a double long issue with a bunch of backup stories that i also can't follow yeah because that's not helping the fact that i don't i don't know any of this right like if i knew spawn better maybe i'd be like all right cool like fill me in on these characters they'll be important later or whatever but I'm just like, I don't know who any of these people are, and I don't know what they what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> and it's like, the art's cool, like, don't get me wrong, but it's like, I'm just so lost. <laughs> you mentioned the art. Man, oh man, this, the first story, the, the main story is beautiful. It's crazy, yeah. They're, I wow. Mean, I, I, yeah, the, the scene we were talking about earlier where they're at the, um, the, the, not a funeral. It's a. It's a. Cer- they're at a cemetery, yeah. um, and the first page where it's sh- uh, I almost said Sean <laughs> Spawn, and he's the top of him is like shrouded in the shadow, oh my and it's God. just the cloak. Like that's so goddamn cool. Like, you know, whatever your feelings are about Spawn as a, a character or a brand or whatever, I like what a cool fucking character design he has. You know, like oh my God. <laughs> It's so crazy. Like, could you imagine if you had a writer, and I think Sean Lewis did a great job, but uh, like a writer on the caliber of a Hickman, even sure, or someone at that tier level writing the main Spawn book. Real talk, you know who I, you know who I think I would want to write this story, but like I would want it to be like a hard reset in some ways. Would be Grant Morrison. Like, just go, uh, yeah. just go fucking like you know what I mean like just lean in lean into this as hard as you fucking can and make it even wackier <laughs> I think that would be really interesting uh I, I I wonder what Grant would bring 
to a story of this nature. I don't know that Grant is cynical enough for this. That's probably this true. Is a highly cynical story. Yeah. Um, but we know that Donnie Cates is coming and there are other creators that are coming who uh, are going to be that, you know, have those chops. So um, if Sean Lewis is an indicator of what can happen when Spawn is written by someone who's, and, and you know, Todd is one of the greatest artists of all time. Fucking legend. He's not really a writer like that. Like, yeah. That's just not his strong suit. When you have a writer who has more chops, this is the quality we can get. Imagine an a lister on it. I'm so hyped for where this stuff's going. It's crazy. I am very interested to see what uh, Donny Cates' take on on the universe is, considering like you know, obviously uh, he he kind of made his bones um, on Venom, and like right. obviously there's a real connective tissue between Venom and Spawn. Um, yeah. I wonder how it would affect me with my symbiote. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You know, Donny Cates likes his Edge Lord symbiote characters. I feel like he's about to he's about to make this pop off. <laughs> I'm with you on that, and I I I can't wait to see that. Um, yeah. Again, the art's great. I hope that whatever King, King Spawn number two cuts the backstories. I don't want those to continue. Let's just get that core story every yeah, month. Give, push those characters out to their own books already, you know? Like, that's clearly where what you want to do with most of them. Yeah, I just don't, like, Haunt, I don't even understand how he's, like, I haven't read Haunt in a, almost a decade, so I clearly am, I missed the boat. I don't know how he's involved. I didn't know he was a Spawn character. Isn't that that character that I thought is Robert Kirkman co-created with him, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was its own thing. So did I. Maybe they're just spinning them in now. Or maybe there was a connective tissue that I don't remember sure. or that was established later. No clue. All I know is that for me, this was random, but it's fine. If if it wasn't random, I don't think I would like it more because I just feel like it, it's it's not great. Yeah. End of story. I just didn't like it regardless of I don't know what's going on in any of these books except what's present in the book and sure. I'm loving it. So that's not a factor for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, we've got gunslinger coming. We've got she spawn coming. All these characters are getting their own books. Uh, I'm excited for more. And uh, I just want to see what other writers have to say. So Sean, would you say that you are going to uh, pull it? I'm definitely going to pull. I'm definitely going to pull uh, spawn going forward. I think I'm I'm very like torn between drop it and trade weight it because like I have a morbid curiosity here, but I'm I have not been gripped yet. But the thing is, with the beauty of like Image sends us these books, so I can read them for free and f feel no guilt about that because we're here to talk about them. So like I I don't really feel comfortable st staking any of the monikers we've given on this book yet. I feel like I need a little bit more time with it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I want to be um, fair to it. Well, I think you'll probably have a very definitive opinion about this next book. We're talking about Made in Korea number four. Uh, Jeremy Holt, of course, the writer, the not just the writer. Jeremy Holt's not just the writer. They're the torturer. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy tweeted, I believe it was a tweet, something to the effect of I'm sorry for the events of Made in Korea number four. And damn right, you better be sorry, Jeremy. Because <laughs> this was my book of the week. This is the book I think you should rush out and get. I'm saying it up front. Absolutely. Book, Mine too. Yeah. This book made me cry. This book hit me right where I live. Last time, oh, I'm sorry. I got to get through the rest of the creative scene before we dive in fully. So, of course, Jeremy wrote it. Uh, George Shaw did the art. The letters were by Adam Wallet. Um, and then we had the the uh, the backup story, which was actually done by Wook Jin Clark, written and illustrated by them. So let's talk about it. Uh, last time I said that I was getting heavy Columbine vibes. These people, these kids reminded me of Harrison Klebold, the two um, douchebag trench coat mafia members who committed that horrific act in the 90s. I think it was like 98 they did yeah. Columbine. 
they completely resemble those two characters here uh very 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 they, uh clearly they even like the thing uh he said in the, the you believe in god yeah 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 right totally yeah. totally echoing that event it's aping it that's literally yeah. what happened um and seeing these seeing columbine really affected me weirdly that's the first memory i have of fear of the world okay uh and yeah. i've never really been able to forget that um i've watched documentaries about it it's a a, a, a part of my life in a weird way and seeing that replicated here in this book was hard to read it was hard to get to get through that not because it's bad just because i have a personal feeling about it just emotional exactly and what was crazy about it and what you know i i started to get emotional as soon as these two fools these idiots shot our main character that was devastating um but when Jesse is the savior when she prevents so many kids ultimately from dying. Yeah. That was so incredible. It made me think like, wow, what if there was a Jesse that day? You know, obviously there wasn't. Obviously it's a tragic event that, you know, unfortunately there were no heroes except for the police who were able to intervene although it was, you know, the damage had been done. What if there was a Jesse, you know? What if there was someone who could have stopped some more of the senseless violence from taking place? That was so critical. And she, unfortunately, she had a hand in, in, in allowing these two goons to get this far, but she stops them. Yeah. She knows right from wrong when it matters, ultimately. I, <clears throat> I found that to be really compelling because, you know, obviously, um, I... Yeah, I guess it's the end of issue two is where we have the tease of her like hanging out with these kids. And I remember reacting to that issue when we did the review and being like, "Uh oh, like this is this really can only go poorly, you know, and like and I, I had a lot of different theories about how it might play out. But I remember when it was like that they were teaching her to use this gun and all this stuff. It was like, "Uh oh, like that that feels like this is going down a dark road for that character. And, like, ultimately, it did go down a very dark road. Not what I had predicted, necessarily, but um, but I loved that when presented with that uh, that darkness, right? Like, she um, she makes the right choice, right? Like right. you said, she has that, that moral center um, that comes through. And, you know, like you said, like, obviously, she inadvertently played a role in, in kind of setting these actions into motion. Um, but you know, she's innocent, right? Like she's a kid. Um, she, she has, she doesn't have that context, um, and was fooled, you know? And like the fact that, you know, and who, who's to say where it's going to go from here, but the fact that she had that negative experience and, you know, um, still chose to do the right thing rather than allowing that to, you know, that betrayal um, to take her to, like, a, a more violent place, right? Um, than she had to go, I guess, to end the conflict. Uh, I, I found that to be really uplifting, you know? And, like, that being the conclusion of this otherwise really heavy and dark issue, um, I thought was really, really artful. I thought that was handled really well. Um, because I think this book has been a book that is that there's a lot of darkness under the the surface. There's a lot kind of brewing and not to say that I was like worried it was going to jump the shark or anything like that, but I didn't want it to have like a hard pivot moment. You know, I didn't want it to become a book that just became doom and gloom. Um, and seeing how Jesse reacts to this trauma and, you know, overcomes it and, and turns it into something positive. Um, was really, really nice to see. You know, it's like, it's the kind of story I really respond to. Yeah, I, I, I agree with all that. Uh, I had a, it was hard to, to, to read, especially when she gets shot and those, you know, that diagnostic uh, that was running. I love that page. Back online. That was great. That was 
well done and it really kept me on the hook um i wish i read this physically uh to see those pages in physical i will still of course purchase the book but um it was it was like oh my god is she even gonna wake up from this we know that her creator is here um so maybe he's gonna find her and like you know i had so many thoughts going through my mind and uh, I just think it's such a, a mark of a great story where, you know, it could go so many different ways from panel to panel, from page to page, this thing yeah. could, could shift. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it speaks to the fact that like the story has heat, like it's kinetic, you know, like it's, it's, it's not a, a story that I, I think you could at all um, criticize for moving too slowly, but it also doesn't feel like it's breakneck. Like, it's taken right. its time when it needed to, um, which has made issues like this, right? Like, this issue stands out. This is the this issue is the first one that really has any major action in it, you know? Like, yeah. most of it has just been talking, implication, like, you know, thought experiments, things that are getting you on the hook and selling you on the world and everything. And for this to be the moment where, like, things are finally escalating as we're kind of nearing the end of the first arc it just feels like such a perfect pace, you know, like it, uh, if it hadn't picked up in this issue, I certainly wouldn't have been complaining, but for it to like have that hard pivot, we're all out of nowhere. Seemingly, I'm mean, not out of nowhere. The last two issues have been building to this, but like, I don't know. This feels like such a turn, but not in a way that gives you whiplash, not in a way that is like anything but earned and gets me like, fuck, like, like, where are we going next? Because the end of this issue is crazy, too. It ends on a crazy reveal, you know, right. in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's just so much here. There's so many so comics here. are lucky to do one of those two things well. Yeah. You know, and this, I feel like Made in Korea has gotten it right every time. The issue is good, but it also seeds me for, like, holy shit, what's going to happen next? Every time. And, and there's there's even more, like, first of all, I got to say, um, from an art perspective, this issue was fantastic. You know, this is not a, it's not a superhero story, you know, this is a, this is a story that's pretty grounded. Obviously, there's a, there's a, you know, a sentient uh, robot, <laughs> robot running around as a child. Um, but outside of that, everything that happens is pretty normal. Um, seeing Jesse run around looking like Terminator. Mm hmm. But she's, you know, objectively the hero in this situation. That contrast, seeing the way that the teacher looks at her when she's escorting the kids out. Um, I almost wish they would have played a little bit more into the fact that it's kind of horrific that she's like that. Yeah. Um, but that was great. That was a great visual. Seeing Jesse beat the shit out of those kids, the, the two kids that did this. Yeah. Also, really like that. Wonder, I'm, I wonder what the implication is going to be, though, because she killed them. I mean, at the very least, she maimed them. Like you know, I don't the the one kid she might not have killed. Uh, like, but at the very least, like she she straight up rips this one kid's arms off of his body, like. You could you could conceivably survive that, but like I mean, <laughs> you know, like she straight up maimed somebody. But I, I mean, the 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 question, I guess, right, of like what's what's the implication for her as a character? I don't know. What are the consequences for this action? Probably nothing. She's in another country at the end of this issue, right? So it's like, right. I mean, yeah. pro she's probably leaving all this shit in the dust, is what I would guess. I think. I think taking her out of this situation in the immediate is an interesting decision. Yeah. On yeah. Jeremy's part, because it does, it does shift the story and it does kind of like get her away, at least for a time from any kind of consequence that might befall her as a result of her, you know, uh, actions in this. Um, I kind of want to see that. So I hope that that's not uh, like, I don't want to see her go to jail. I sure. just want to see the lesson you know, that she has to learn and, and how her, you know, her parents, at least the parents that she knows how they deal with this and all that different stuff. So I hope that they we do get back to that at some point. Um, but like you said, the issue does end in an interesting way. She is now 
gone to Korea. Uh, and it turn as it turns out, this dude is her parent. Yeah, we need like, that. Well, her he created her. But I think that if you look at this and tie it into the proxy story, we understand a little bit more. Oh, holy shit. Yeah. I didn't put that together, dude. That's a great that's a great call. Oh, yeah. man. You think it's like a you think it's based on his biological daughter who's yes, passed? That's my thought. Fuck. I didn't think about that. That's crazy. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Every one of these backup stories has absolutely meant something. It seeded ideas into what the world is and and what some of the rules are. So, like, that being in this issue. Right. Yeah, that's pretty like, interesting. What, a, what an interesting time to put that uh, in here. Yeah, and especially um, when you think about what the last line of the issue is, right? Is, cousin, I'd like you to meet my daughter. Right, exactly. He doesn't, you know, he's that's a that's a pretty strong phrase for if you just created her, you know. Right, right. Um, and also, did you catch that this is a this is a place that doesn't have guns otherwise? Guns yeah, yeah. That there was like a, a, a at least in America there was a nationwide yeah. gun ban several years ago at yeah. the time of this, which makes what these kids do that much more stark because everyone thinks this is some kind of a game at first. Yeah. Right. Right. Like the, that, that, you know, I remember you said like when you first really, really got taken by that moment was when they shot uh, Jesse. But for me, it was the kid who looks out and he goes, Oh, so retro. Hey, I think there's like a game of paintball going outside or something. And then like, yeah. and then the next shot is everyone being like, Oh no. Like, and actually realizing what's happening. Yeah. Um, and like uh the the context of there being the the firearm ban I thought was interesting like that definitely is is obviously like that that kind of escalates what this would mean societally right it would be yeah. like a huge moment um but I was thinking about it and like it would be even worse in the context of this universe where we know that like people can't have kids for some reason right that like there are less children than ever so, like, any number of children dying is, like, that's a catastrophe. Like, I mean, that's not to say that it's not already. Yes, of course, but, yeah. But it's even worse, right? When, like... <laughs> you can't just make new ones. Yeah, and, like, conceivably, like, those are, like, that's less people in the gene pool while you're trying to keep the species alive or whatever the fuck the rules are that we're still, as readers, learning. But, like, that was my first thought. And then they reveal that, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, yeah, this would be, like, a huge... You know, this is like a 9-11-esque catastrophe that would be looked at nationwide as like, oh, my gosh, like, I can't believe this happened, you know? Yeah. Um, the backup story I thought was really good. It was also, uh, you know, um, very powerful because these two parents, you know, they see their daughter who, you know, has passed in a proxy um that they, they they see and they actually steal to try to get a few more moments with you know what looks like their daughter and that's so sad um especially in a world where again as it appears you can't have kids anymore um that's just awful that this is my favorite backup yes. story so far i really like this one um I, I thought it was really really good and again i mean like i didn't put two and two together like like you did sean with um the theory about jesse and and perhaps her being related to i i forget the name of the i never remember his name they they he didn't it, i don't think anyone said his name in this issue i don't think he was named um but i know we know it but i can't remember yeah um but uh, aside from that angle to it, I was thinking about how, like, d does this speak to something sinister, maybe? Like, are they, like, are they illegally copying people in some way? Like, did their daughter die and they somehow got, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I'm wondering if there's some bigger implication about how the the replicants or the children are made. Well, um, the so to me, right, the daughter of these two uh, parents here that died doesn't look exactly like the proxy that they stole. She looks close enough that they put their daughter's That's how you message read it. on her. That's how I read it. Um, because they miss their daughter so much. And in my mind, had this been a real child, for lack of a better term, like a, a biological human, then maybe they wouldn't have done that. Maybe they wouldn't have tried to steal the kid. But because it was a proxy, um, they look at it as a no thing. Harm, exactly. In a way, they look at it as we need this so much, we're willing to do this act that we wouldn't normally do because it's harmless, but it's not harmless. Yeah. Um, and so it was a sad story all around. I don't think that there's not merit to what you're saying because this would make the second child who presumably looks like an actual human because if my theory is correct, then this engineer who created Jesse created her in the visage of his own daughter. Right. So, yeah, go. I mean, it could be either way. I think what you're laying out makes a lot of sense. I'm, I'm, I definitely took it as that it looked just like their daughter, just because like I'm looking at the last page where the, the replicant, is looking at the couple and she's like very confused. And then there's a picture of their daughter and like the next thing next to like the urn and everything. And like, they look so similar, but like it, that doesn't mean anything. Like you could be right that it is just a projection thing. And, and I mean, either way it's, it's a good, it's a really, really good little backup story. And I think it deepens the, our understanding of the world and our ability to like emotionally orient ourselves in this time and space and what these people are going through uh, day to day. So, I I mean, either way, I really dug it, but I feel like one of the two things we laid out is probably true, and we'll have to see where that, where that lands us, but... I'm I also sorry. think it's worth, for the sake of conversing about the, uh, the proxy story, um, the two parents who steal her, uh, they, the way that it's presented is they're having a blast. Right. Like they're having a great time in the park running around. Yeah. But when they get arrested, the proxy doesn't look happy at all. Is she unhappy because she was scared or is she unhappy because these two got arrested when they were just having a great time? That's kind of how I read it, because it, it reminded me of how Jesse had that moment in this issue. Right. Where like she's all having fun up until someone starts bleeding and she's like, what's going on? Like they have that lack of social awareness where like if, if she was just having fun and they were playing and everything, she's like, Oh, like why are those nice people like being hurt? You know, that's kind of how I was reading it. It's very, very interesting. And I, I, I can't wait for more. Uh, this was my, not only was this my book of the week, but I have to say that this, this series has honestly been such a joy to follow. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not fun. It's not a fun book. It's a heavy one, but it's really, really amazing. And I can't wait to see what uh, Jeremy Holt has in store, not just in this series, but beyond this book as well. I highly recommend that you catch up. It's only the four issues so far. Um, and we know that it's going to end shortly. Is five so, the last one in the first arc or is it six? Uh, it's five or six. I can't remember myself. Um but it's worth your time. I, I, I assure you it is. Um, I've so, yeah. told every comics reader in my life that if there's one book you pick up this year, it should be made in Korea. Um, and that's not to den There's some, I say that in, cause it's an esteemed company. You know, there are some great, great new series out this year that I love. And I would, I swear by, but made in Korea is something really special and it's a, a, a new original idea from not a new writer, but somebody who is, you know, finally getting over and with good reason. I am yeah. consistently impressed by the work that Jeremy's done on this book. And like, I'm not only excited to follow this story to its completion, but you know, the, the, where their career goes from here. Cause I hope it's only up. Cause, uh, 
they've impressed me with every issue of, of Made in Korea. I could not recommend it more highly. It's it's also worth uh, you asked how many issues. It is six. Nice, good. I'm glad we have. I'm glad we have two. Yeah, uh, that's gonna do it here for our reviews. Hopefully, you enjoyed them. If you do pick up these books and you like them, let us know your thoughts. Uh, we always appreciate hearing from you guys. Thank you to Image for giving us these the early access to these titles. Uh, and if there are other books that you want us to review that we're not, write in and let us know. We are open to review whatever it is that you guys are interested in because ultimately we're doing this for you. Uh, so to support us, make sure you hit that follow button, like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe for free. All that stuff's free to do. Helps us out a ton. Uh, we appreciate all the support. Listen to our main show, The Comics Pals, which drops every Monday. This is Wednesday's image reviews. Thursdays you can find our reviews for everything else um so if you guys are into it make sure you support we appreciate it thank you so much for listening until next week take care guys see you next week